Hi everyone, I'm Kate Dunbar, the Campground Gourmet for Rolling on TV. Today I'm teaching you how to make a savory bacon and peppercorn biscuit. There is nothing better than this for breakfast at the campground, especially with a peppercorn gravy. And I'll be showing you how to make that when we're outside cooking over the fire. Let's talk about ingredients. I have self-rising flour. I've got some thick cut bacon that I've already cooked up ahead of time. I have some fresh ground black pepper. I've got some butter and I have some buttermilk. This recipe couldn't be any simpler for you. Let's get started. So I have two and a half cups of self-rising flour in this bowl and self-rising flour is fantastic. It already has the leavener and the salt in it so you just have to scoop and go it also cuts down on storage in your trailer because we all know how valuable that is and now i'm going to add in the black pepper i've got one tablespoon of that and i'm going to give this just a good little mix around you can use your hands you can use a wooden spoon whatever works for you and i've got the quarter cup of butter and i've sliced it into cubes and here's my first trick for you Take your hands and just lightly toss the butter in the flour. You want to coat it. That way, when you start to work the butter in, there's already flour protecting it so it doesn't get as sticky. So I'm just going to take it, I'm just going to squeeze it into the flour really gently. You don't want to overwork this because you don't want to melt the butter into the flour. You want it to be almost like shingles. So you're just going to take the butter in your hand and just kind of squeeze and press it through into the flour. Just until it's distributed evenly, like I said, you don't want to overwork this. And if you're looking for self-rising flour, if you can find it right over there, white lily is the one that you want to use. For generations, people have been cooking with this. They've been making delicious tender biscuits, high rising cakes and pound cakes that are full of a lot of flavor and a lot of butter, but they're so soft. It's because it's red winter wheat and that's what you want when you're doing baked goods. It makes a really great tender flaky crust for a pie too. And it comes with self-rising and it also comes um, with unbleached regular flour. So all of our butter is cut in. I have little pieces. You can see it's just finely pressed together. Now I'm going to take the bacon. Like I said, I've already pre-cooked this and I've saved the bacon drippings in the cast iron pan because we're going to be making a bacon peppercorn gravy in just a minute. I've got a bunch of flour around here flying all over the place. Next, this is where you can make a choice. You can use your hands or you can use a spoon. Since I'm a baker by profession, I like to use my hands because then I know if the flour is too wet or too dry. Here's another trick. Don't add in all the liquid at once. Add in about half of it. Go all the way around the outside first and then just a little bit in the center. Take your hand and shape it into a claw and you wanna bring your dough all together around the outside turn your bowl, lift it up, do everything you can to just not overwork the flour. When you do that, your biscuits ending up get really tough. It's not fun because you don't want to bite into a hockey puck. You want to bite into a biscuit that's soft with that nice crisp outside. And here's how you know if you have enough buttermilk in it. You want to grab a little handful and hold it and squeeze it together and you wanna see if it starts to crumble after you've pressed it. And mine's crumbling just a little bit, so I'm gonna add in a touch more buttermilk. Just a little bit, just kinda of going in a zigzag pattern right over the top. I'm gonna to take my hand again and just bring everything together. And now I can start to feel it's a little bit tacky. All the dry um, little bits are getting clumped together. And that's what you want. And I can start to see the butter flakes in here. So I know everything's hydrated. Now I'm gonna take and get this off my fingers and I'm gonna start to press this together in the bowl. We're trying to cut down on a mess here. And see how it's all just coming together? All right, so we're gonna take this out. Now this is where we're gonna gently work it together. I love having one of these plastic scrapers. You can get into a bowl, you can scoop ingredients off of a counter. And another thing, when you're cleaning your cast iron, you can use these large scrapers to get out any bits that might be stuck on. 
Now I'm going to need some room, so I've got to move my used ingredients holders off to the side. Now I'm not putting flour on this bench first because there's still some flour and everything needs to come together. I'm going to press this out. I'm going to try and keep it in the shape of a rectangle. Just press. And this is where it gets a little messy. And this is why having one of these scrapers helps. Grab the top and fold it over to the side. Just kind of press it in and then turn it. Do the exact same thing. Press it down. Use the heel of your hand. Bring everything together. Just like that. The buttermilk is hydrating the flour. It's mixing with the butter. There we go. See how it's all coming together? I rarely use a rolling pin when I'm making biscuits because I don't want to overwork it. Like I said, that leads to a really tough biscuit. One more time. See how everything's just staying together? Turn it again. Bring it all together, press it out, and we're almost there. You want the thickness to be uh, about an inch because we're going to be cooking this over the fire in a Dutch oven, and there's going to be a lot of heat. So you're going to need that thickness for it just so it all stays together and it cooks evenly. All right, we're just about done. I can see all of the flecks of the pepper in here, and I'm trying to smush down the, uh, the bacon as much as I can and get everything in here. All right, biscuit cutter. There's a trick to it, and I didn't learn this until I was with a friend and I was at her house and her mom was making biscuits one morning. I've always been the person who put a biscuit cutter in there and kind of twisted and turned and then popped it out. Don't do that. That will seal the edges and by us folding over the dough, we've created layers and layers and layers of that butter that's in there and the buttermilk and especially the bacon. It's still going to release some fat. And if you seal, if you turn, you're sealing the edges and they won't rise. So there's a little trick. So straight down and out. Now I have a lined Camp Dutch oven here two pieces of parchment. I can hear the bacon as the cookie cutter goes through it, as the biscuit cutter goes through it, crunching away. It's awesome. And all you want to do is take the biscuits and place them snug next to each other. There we go. Perfect. Now, if you wanted to add some more pepper flavor to this, try finding bacon, the thick cut bacon that has black pepper all around it. It's delicious and it will just leave um, traces of the peppercorns in your pan, in your cast iron pan. So when we're making the gravy, it'll all taste delicious and we won't have to add any extra. So just press this out again. You wanna bring this together very carefully. We're not going to refold or do anything. We're just gonna bring it together and I like to leave the second batch of biscuits a little bit thicker than the first batch because they've already been worked once. And if you flatten them out too much, sometimes they don't rise as much. And I have room right here for two more. There we go. I'll just kind of smush these around a little bit. Okay. Now, my Camp Dutch oven is totally filled. And if you can see... There's a ton of layers right here in this biscuit. It's gonna taste delicious when it bakes up. There's some extra. What do you do with this? Well, if you're like me, you're gonna save it. You're gonna put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in your freezer. The next time you're making chicken and dumplings, use this, just break off some pieces, pop it in the top and cook it that way. Don't waste this, it's perfect. But if you have a larger, rounder Dutch oven, you'll be able to just press this together and put it in there. I'm gonna clean off my hands and Let's head outside to the Camp Dutch oven table and cook these and make some delicious, rich gravy. Okay, well, here I am outside and I've got the coals nice and hot here. I've got the skillet that I cooked the bacon in earlier and saved all that fat in. It's warming up. Let's get that Camp Dutch oven on here and I'll show you how to regulate the heat to make some biscuits. 
All right, so I have a good bed of coals underneath and I've put a couple in the back because I'm gonna be pulling from those to place on the top. When you're making biscuits, you're gonna want more heat on the bottom and less heat on the top. If you're using charcoal briquettes to do this instead of lump charcoal or hardwood from your campfire, you're gonna put about 14 to 16 briquettes down below evenly spaced, not all centered. You want it all around the outside, a few in the center and then about 10, maybe 12 on the top. And see how I'm just placing this lump charcoal right around the top here. Now, if you're using lump charcoal instead of charcoal briquettes, remember, this is gonna be a much hotter fire, so you're not gonna need as many coals. You just wanna take it, I've heated up underneath. Now I'm just kind of pulling the hot coals out a bit because the heat's gonna hit around the side. It's gonna hit on the bottom and on the top and that's how you're creating that oven, that all around heat. Just make certain that everything is kind of pulled out. This is evenly spaced. We're gonna go about two minutes and then we're gonna do a rotation and then I'm gonna turn the lid an additional 45 degrees. We don't let it sit here over the hot fire and cook because that'll create, well, burnt biscuits. And who wants burnt biscuits at the campfire? This is also a fantastic recipe for you to practice at home. Biscuits are one of the easiest things to maintain. You'll know where your fire is too hot. You'll know where your fire is too cool. And if you can make the perfect biscuit at home by practicing on a Dutch oven table or in your kettle grill, when you're at the campfire, it's going to be quick, simple, and easy for you. So we're going to let this go about another minute and a half, and then I'm going to rotate it. We're going to get over here to the gravy. And like I said before, I saved a bunch of the bacon drippings. I have some butter here, and I'm going to add that to it. Let's just get that around. Melt this down. It's just take just a little bit. When you're making gravy over a fire like this, it takes time. That's why I always like to start it the second that I get my biscuits over the hot coals. You don't want to wait. You want everything to be ready at one time. And by adding the little bit of extra butter, like I said, about two tablespoons, it just makes everything come together quicker. I'll come back in just a minute and we'll get the rest of the gravy going. All right, it's been about two minutes. The butter's melted, the bacon fat is ready to go, but we need to rotate this. So I'm gonna pick it up very carefully. Remember, this is really hot. And I'm gonna turn it about 180 degrees. There we go. And I'm gonna take my lid lifter and I'm gonna give this lid an additional like 45 degree turn. Don't peek into it yet. The steam needs to be there to help those biscuits rise and get that beautiful golden color. About two more minutes. So in the meantime, it's now time to add our flour. I have about a quarter cup here because there's about a quarter cup of the fat. And that bacon and butter, and now it's time to make a roux. If you cook traditional Southern recipes like gumbo, you know what a roux is. It's flour and fat cooked together to create a deep, dark color. Well, with this today, we're going to take it to a light caramel. It should take about five minutes. And you just want to make certain that you're whisking constantly. It's going to get out all of the lumps. It's going to help cook the flour. And then we've got two fantastic additions. We're going to be adding in some cracked black pepper. And then I'm going to be adding back in that saved bacon from before. So two minutes and I'll see you back here. We'll rotate the biscuits and then we'll start adding in the rest of the ingredients to the gravy. Okay, so it's been about two to three minutes. Our gravy, look at that. So this is the roux, this is the flour, and the butter and the bacon drippings. It's the perfect color. Like I said, it's that caramel color. That's what we're looking for. All right, let's give our biscuits another turn. I can smell them. That biscuit baking smell, that flour, I can smell the butter in there. You can also smell the bacon and the black pepper. It's perfect. We're giving this about two minutes. And now let's add in our black pepper. A 
get that going. Now with this addition of fresh black pepper, you're gonna get a lot of great spicy flavor. And if you really wanted to take the heat up a little bit, you could always add in some red chili flake. It would be fantastic. Just give that about a minute. Let that heat up. And now it's time to add in our milk. I have two cups of milk over here and I don't know if I'm gonna use all of it. I might, I might not. It just depends on how hot this cast iron skillet is and how hot that roux is. Now be careful, this is gonna splatter a little bit. So pour it away from you, work it on one side and then start adding in. Just keep whisking. It'll all come together and get nice and creamy. There we go. I think I'm definitely gonna be using the two cups today. All right, done with that. Hang on to the handle for safety because you don't want this spilling on you. And just keep whisking. This is nice and thick. Perfect. So this has all come together now. Simple and easy, really quick to make this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move some things over on the side and since I'm all done with this and I don't want it to cook anymore, I'm gonna bring over my glove and I'm gonna place this right over here. Give it a good stir off the heat and now I'm gonna add in my bacon. This is the remainder of the bacon that I cooked up earlier that I want for the gravy. Stir that together. Perfect. Now, if you need to thin it out, add a little more milk to it. Okay, let's check those biscuits. Let's grab our lid lifter. Carefully remove the lid. Oh, those are puffing up beautifully. They probably need about five more minutes on there. So I'll be back in five minutes and let's serve this meal up. All right, it's been about five or so minutes. If you notice, the set's kind of changed a little bit here. Let me tell you why. I checked the biscuits and I lifted up one of them to check the browning on the bottom and it was toasting faster than on the top. That's why you keep two trivets going here when you're Camp Dutch oven cooking. I was able to move this Camp Dutch oven over to the cooler side where there aren't any coals underneath it, but I kept the coals on top because that's how the top of the biscuits are gonna brown. The entire bottom and side of this Dutch oven are still nice and hot. It's still gonna continue to cook the biscuits, but they're not gonna burn. I moved the gravy over to the warmer side after I cleared away some of the coals just to warm it up and get it ready to be served. Totally lump free, nice and smooth with those bacon bits and cracked black pepper. Let's get to breakfast. I'm starving, I need another cup of coffee and I'm just so hungry. It's a really warm morning here in Texas. It's about 96 degrees. So I want something that's gonna be filling and delicious and carefully move this off. Look, they couldn't be better. Perfectly golden cooked all the way through, let's grab a plate, take a biscuit out, actually I'll take two out, be careful with this, so I've got one and I've got two. All right, let's take a look here. So the top is perfectly golden and toasted, look at the bottom, not burn at all. That's because I moved this over off of the heat and let the top continue to cook. Well. Let me show you a little trick that I have. I saved about a tablespoon of some of that bacon fat, and now I'm gonna brush this right over the top of the biscuit. Normally you put melted butter, but why would you wanna add that when you could add even more bacon flavor to your biscuits? Just brush it over the top. It's gonna soak right in perfectly. Now let's serve up some of this delicious bacon and peppercorn cream gravy right over the top. You can make some scrambled eggs. You could cook a steak. It would be perfect. Put that off to the side. Let's give this a taste. What I love about using self-rising flour is that it's easy. 
It's one stop, it's right there. You've got your leavener, you've got your salt, and you've got the flour all in one. And they make the most tender biscuits in the world. Mmm. Crisp and crunchy on the outside. Mmm. A beautiful piece of bacon. I just crunched on that. There's the warmth from all that peppercorn. This is the perfect meal for you to practice your Camp Dutch oven cooking at at home or at the campground. Some ways to change up the flavor. Instead of using bacon, use andouille sausage. It would be delicious. Well, I'm going to go dig into this and I'm going to go grab that cup of coffee that I need. I'm Kate Dunbar, the Campground Gourmet for Rolling on TV. And today we made black pepper and bacon biscuits. <laughs>